Hi there guys, something a little bit different for you today. So what we're going to be looking at is how a kite flies and what actually happens to the airflow over the kite as you're pulling the bar in and letting the bar out. So hopefully giving you a visual demonstration of this will give you a bit of a better idea of how a kite works and then when you come to trimming a kite and just generally flying the kite, hopefully you've got a better idea of what's going on. So as you can see on the diagram, here is my amazingly drawn kite, super sophisticated there, as you can see, in a wind tunnel. Now let me explain what the colours are. Black is basically turbulent flow or no flow, okay, no lift. Red turning to yellow is lift. So this shows where the kite is generating lift or pull in allocation, or where it's pulling you along. So the more red and yellow, the stronger those colours get, the more lift we've got. If it's black, it means there's zero lift and you've got what's called turbulent flow over the kite, so you're not really getting anything. So here we start with the kite in a fairly neutral position. And you can see we've got a little bit of lift, fairly far back on the kite, as you can see, it's starting sort of, you know, a quarter of a way back on the kite. But under the, under the bottom of the kite, it's all fairly turbulent, but we're still getting a little bit of lift on the top of the kite. Now watch what happens as I simulate pulling the bar in. Now when we pull the bar in, what we do is we change the angle of attack of the kite to something more like that. So this is, we've just started pulling the bar in. I give it a few seconds to, to reset. And you can see now that turbulent flow under the kite is still there, but it's disappeared quite a lot, much less, and we've got more lift and the lift is starting to creep forward on the kite so we're generating more power so let's keep on pulling the bar in so we pull it a little bit more and you can see that turbulent flow under the kite now turns to pretty much laminar flow and we're getting a lot more lift and again the lift is getting a lot more of the kite is generating lift and the lift is moving further forward and we're starting to generate this yellow patch of lift in the middle of the kite which means we're getting a lot of lift so we're cranking up the power as we pull the bar in let's keep going so pull the bar in a little bit more again let it just settle down now you can see the lift is increasing in intensity and size it's now moved right to the front of the kite and we've got pretty much perfect laminar flow under the bottom of the kite with a tiny little bit of turbulent flow coming off the very back of the kite. But what you can see is that the back of the kite is now not generating lift. All that lift has moved forward and we've got this nice patch of yellow and the lift extends very high. So we're getting an awful lot of lift at this point. So let's keep pulling in and see what happens. So we pull the kite in a bit more. Lift has moved all the way forwards now and again really moving into the yellow at the front of the kite generating a huge amount of lift at this point. Again beautiful laminar flow over the whole length of the kite, slight bit of turbulence at the back but you can see as we pull the bar in we're increasing that lift and shifting it further forward in the kite. Now, whoa what's just happened? We've pulled the bar in too much. And you can see we've absolutely destroyed all lift. We've now got turbulent flow over the entire top side of the canopy, generating no lift. And this is when the kite will start to backstall. That horrible thing where it just falls backwards towards the trailing edge. And it's simply because you've steered the kite too far. You've pulled the bar in too far so the kite is no longer generating lift, it's literally falling out of the sky. And I'm sure you've all seen this, especially on light wind days. So what's the solution? Well, the solution, as we all know, hopefully, if not you do now, let the bar out. Let the bar out, let the airflow reform, but notice how long it takes to reform. It doesn't reform instantly. In fact, at the moment this isn't reforming at all. So maybe I haven't let the bar out far enough, so let's let it out a little bit further. But 
again, look how long it takes to reform. And this is where people get confused, especially at the early stages. They let the bar out, nothing happens. So they pull the bar back in again, let the bar out, pull the bar back in again, because it takes a second or two for the airflow over the kite to reset. Let me just show you that again. So we, we stall the kite. The kite's now back stalling. You know, when your instructor, if you've got an instructor, is screaming at you, bar out, bar out, get the bar out. You let the bar out, but look how long it takes to reset because the wind has to travel again over the distance of the canopy before it resets. And that lift starts to generate much slower. So it takes a second or two for the kite to reset itself at proper lift. Okay, so it's not an instant thing. This does take a while to happen. So at this point, you know, let the bar out, let the bar out. So you go, okay, cool, I'll let the bar out all the way. Now what happens here? So you start to let the bar out the other way. And now you've let it out too far. So now you're catching wind on the front of the kite, generating very, very little lift right at the back of the kite. But what this does is it means that wind hits the top of the canopy and collapses it. So this is where you get front stall. Now this is often caused when you pull the bar in a lot and then let the bar out really fast and that kite momentum kind of keeps the kite going further than it's designed to. So you get this situation of front stall. And this is literally where the kite sort of inverts slightly and then just comes gently, generally crashing down on top of your head. And this is caused by letting the bar out too much often after you've pulled the bar in too far. So you pull the bar in too far, let it out really, really fast, the kite resets and the wind catches the top of the canopy and drops it down. If you found that useful, there's tons more stuff like this in our course, Ride Up Wind in 30 Days. We've put it together to help anyone who's starting out kite surfing get to the holy grail of riding up wind in 30 days, literally, you know, a lot, lot faster than they would. It includes all the things you can do before you even get to the beach to improve your kite surfing. And then a load of information to actually help you through your lessons to fast track you through that learning period and get you out kiting faster. There's a load of people going through at the moment and the reviews we're getting back from it, the feedback we're getting is awesome. I would love to see you on the inside, guys. The link is just below or above, depending on where you're watching this video. Follow that link. You'll be taken to a video which will explain all about it. And then you can be taken through to the course and I would see you on the inside. Very much hoping to see you in there, guys. So hopefully this really simple app gives you a much better idea of how the airflow over the kite, what's actually happening with the airflow as you're steering, as you're moving the bar in and out in a very, very simple method. Hope you enjoyed that video for today. As always, if you did, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers guys.